All right, we're going to talk about uh, big data now. So big data, what is that? Um, we're just talking about, we're not talking about the mysterious concept of big data and what they're doing with everybody's information, although that is something we mentioned in geolocation. Here we're just talking about actually like big as in huge files. Um, you know, huge shape files or large KMLs or big GeoJSONs. Things that are over 10 megabytes uh, in size can generally start to be considered big data. It obviously depends on your definition and also what technology you're using. But when we're talking about leaflet.js as like a front end thing, um, you're talking about loading files. So you don't want to be loading like 10 megabyte files all the time. So 10 megabytes, I'd say, is like at, like, pff, at the absolute farthest limit. Um, I wouldn't even really want anything over one or two megabytes, but sometimes, you know, you can get away with maybe a little bit more. It kind of depends on your setup. Um, you can optimize things certain ways. I'm going to show you a couple tools and also some alternatives uh, for if you just can't get around using some of the big data and what you can do with that. So I actually had a project recently uh, where the client kind of underestimated how big their data uh, needs were, which is a really common thing that happens. Uh, clients tend to, or just people approaching maps in general, tend to think of, um, don't tend to know, obviously, what kind of data is co really complex and what kind of data is simple. So sometimes a bunch of markers can be quite simple, but things like um, really complex polygons at like postal code level, where there's literally like 80,000 different postal codes uh, that can be quite a lot of data, obviously. And so this client um, was talking about having some KML files, one that I have here, and wanted postcode sectors around Britain to be shown. So as you can see, this file is 43.8 megabytes. Now 48, 43.8, that's not the end of the world. That's We can probably get that down to a more reasonable size. But first, uh, maybe we should convert it. You can see I've already converted it to JSON here in my testing, um, but I think just for the sake of consistency, because throughout this course we've been using GeoJSONs, it's easiest to convert it. Uh, so for doing that, what we want to do is look up uh, KML to GeoJSON. There we go, it's two GeoJSONs, so that's a nice little tool. You just run your npm install. Uh, right. I don't know if they actually have it in here. Uh, there we are, npm install. Uh, globally, okay, and then just go to your folder and run that. Why don't we go run that? So, and we're gonna run to GeoJSON postcode selectors.kml, and we'll say postcode.json. Right, let's see how long that takes. Okay, we're all done. And uh, how big is our postcode JSON? Oh my lord, it is 170.6 megabytes. That's out of control. Um, so that's obviously way too big. So the KML seems to be uh, significantly more efficient, which is one of its benefits compared to GeoJSON. But even at this size, it was already somewhat unusable. So let's try to find a couple tools and see what we can do here. So we can go to Map Shaper. It's always a classic use. Drop in our postcode, and let's just see what we get. Probably going to get some pretty thick lines or a lot of detail. So it looks like, it doesn't look like it's too much. There's all these polygons, kind of. Uh, but maybe we can simplify it out here a little bit. So if we apply simplification, probably the client, you know, people are going to be down at this level, but I don't know if they're going to be caring about every little detail. So we simplify it down. We don't see any change in detail yet. No change. Oh, there we go. We had a little loss. So it's already 15%. Okay, so why don't we get it to 10% and we'll just call it a day. Export it as a GeoJSON. And here it is. 9.5 megabytes. Okay, so nice. That's now down pretty far. But that might still be a little too large. So what could we do? Okay, well, let's look at the file. So we have a bunch of um, details in here. This like style hash, style postcode, style URL, 
all this kind of stuff that, you know, all this information that I don't know if we really need. So why don't we uh, take a look at this a little bit more closely and pull out some of this information. So let's go to, I'm going to save this uh, into our folder here, where we're GitHub, leaflet, pull that uh, latest postcode here, UK postcode, and we'll head into our file. Let's see if we can just set up some kind of simple little fetch call. And we will head out and Alright, now let's uh, give this a shot. Okay, so we still have all this cool stuff going. Now, now we probably got it loaded. What is, what are we looking at here? Is it over there? Looks like our map is kind of glitching out. Kind of makes sense. We got all this stuff going on. Can we zoom back in? Looks like we froze. Okay. Oh, there we are. Oh, now we're at VAP bounds. Oh my lord, look at all this data. It's totally over the top. Okay, so we are, our map is just screwed from this data. So what are we going to do to try to deal with this? Well, in some ways, this is just too much, you know. Uh, you can't really deal with this as one big piece. You can see there's all these tiny little different chunks. They have just been styled in our old style, so you can't see them super clearly. But when you zoom out, you can see all the little spaces that show all these different chunks. So it's really a lot of data for this to be loading. So, you know, you... We could try simplifying it more, but then we risk losing a lot. Okay, so what can you do from this point? Well, I can show you a couple tools, a little, couple little things you can mess around with. Um, look at them all. It's, it's, it's really cool. So, um, but what, you know, you could, you could, for instance, try to do a complicated thing where you're splitting up the GeoJSON into stuff you need to show at certain different levels, but honestly, that's all far too complex. Uh, the most I would go to is look at potentially um, encoding your polygons. It's a really cool thing that you can do with um, some different types of encoding libraries. So here we are, Mapbox Polyline. That's what we want. So we can do that, and you get, it's amazing, <laughs> you get a whole polygon out as a little string. I wish I could understand the kind of math that goes into that. It's probably it's either simpler than I think, or it's like immensely complex, but it's pretty cool that that actually works. I guess there's something here on it. Why don't we take a look? And, oh my god, um, yeah, I could, I could probably figure it out by reading. So it encodes that, which is amazing, and your, your shapes will go so much smaller. So I would encourage you to give this a shot if you're um, having a problem. And now, you don't just have to worry that it's polyline. Polygons are essentially the same thing. Um, so you can, you can, you know, do that, uh, just reduce the array and make sure it fits in there properly. That may reduce this down to a, a level that we can actually handle, but the map is still a little over, it's a little slow. So um, what I would actually recommend in this case is maybe trying to have these as some kind of base layer that you create a map box account and you upload that in there. Or you reduce it down more, or you reduce the, re or you remove the really small ones that you don't need, and um, you just have to live with it. So with big data, you know, there are limitations on these kind of maps. Um, if you're not able to create your own base layer, this bottom um, layer that has the basic geography, if you're not able to actually create that, there are limitations you're going to run into. This map is still somewhat usable. And probably if we kind of simplified the way this was displayed, we may be able to optimize it a little bit more. Or if we hid a bit more of it. Or if we did a couple more tricks um, that I've outlined in this video. But most of all, you need to know just how to simplify them down using a tool like MapShaper. And I would really encourage you that if MapShaper seemed interesting, to check out some of their awesome command line tools when it comes to changing shape files and... Uh, just really customizing how you're manipulating your geographic uh, files. 
So that's about it for big data. For those of you that um, are really used to working with shape files, you just can't do it in <laughs> Leaflet. You're going to have to convert that to GeoJSON or something like that. Um, so consider using Mapbox if you're at a low level. Um, they have a pretty good relationship with Leaflet. I think the guy who builds some Mapbox stuff is actually the same guy who does Leaflet. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, they'll work well um, together. If you want to just do a base layer, you can always load it as your tile layer into the Leaflet. Um, so with that, uh, on to the next section.